Well, God bless you in kingdom blessings. I'm Apostle H. Daniel Wilson, Senior Pastor of Valley Kingdom Ministries International. We are a word church, we're a worship church, and we're a working church. Well, today our assignment is to share with you just a little bit about what we feel is the centerpiece of our ministry. And it is called the seven systems, the seven mountains, or the seven kingdoms. When Jesus gave the Great Commission in Matthew 28, then again in Mark chapter 16, in some versions he says world, in other versions he says earth. Why is there a difference? Oftentimes when he says world, it's talking about cosmos or the cosmopolitan or the systems. But other times when he's talking about ethnos or ethnicity or people group. So he wants both the systems of this world and the people of this world to be discipled. But one of the key components uh, about this revelation is Revelation uh, 11:15 where John gives a powerful, powerful proclamation. And the seventh angel sounded, and he blew his trumpet, and the voice said, and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. So what are these seven kingdoms? It's what you see here. It is the systems that are in every single nation on the face of the earth. It's religion, or faith as we call it, media, government, family, arts and entertainment, business, and education. All of these make up the systems of this world. And what we believe that our Lord was telling us is not only do we have to disciple people, but we have to make a difference even in these seven areas to really to change society and to change our world. We have to get active and activated in these seven systems. Once you find out where you belong, it will give you a new passion. It will give you a new purpose. It will give you a new uh, vitality and vigor to be able to do your assignment in the earth realm. Well, God I am Pastor Jeff Newtonly, and I will tell you it is so important that we get involved in the systems of this world and as apostle has said earlier they are the systems that influence us all over the world so let's dive right in make sure that i can share my screen all right again we're going to be talking about family on tonight and we pray god's grace to be able to do so I pray even right now, God, that the ears of the listener will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We pray even an opening, uh, open heaven for open spirits to hear what you desire them to hear on today in Jesus' great name. So let's dive right in. You have heard from Apostle H. Daniel Wilson as he gave an overview of the seven systems of power and influence. These systems are all over the world, in every culture all over the world. Now, as you have heard from him and you heard from uh, Pastor Cherie uh, last week as it relates to arts and entertainment, you may be in these three different categories of people. One category could be there are those who are saying, what is this system or mountain stuff? And as Apostle Gullage alluded to, it's the seven systems. We've heard it as the seven mountains. We've heard it as the seven pillars, but we're all talking about the same thing. But what is this system stuff? You might be in that second category who's saying there might be something about this system stuff. You're just kind of getting used to it. You're kind of getting to the, used to the language. You got kind of getting used to how it fits in the body of Christ. It might be something up to this thing. Then you might be in that third category. That's saying this is the opportunity that I've been waiting for. And I certainly, when I first heard, when Apostle first released the seven systems, um, that doctorate in the church in Valley Kingdom Ministries International, this is where I was when I first heard it, because I knew that God wanted us to get throughout the earth to be able to spread the gospel. 
and him being able to do so, it was a it was a mighty, mighty thing that God was able to do through the seven systems as we released this this revelation. And it was so important that we let the body of Christ to be able to know that they need to, to do and take God's glory wherever they are. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus said something to the disciples. He asked them a question. He says, who do men say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus told him, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but it was my father in heaven. Je then Jesus said something very powerful. Check this out. Listen in. It says, upon this rock, upon that revelation, upon that fact, I will build my church. Why am I telling you this? Because I don't want you to start to think that this is this system stuff is just another move that's going to come and go. Because we've had very important and powerful movements of the church that Christ is building. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And I need you to know that he is still building his church. We've had the movements like the Protestant movement, the charismatic movement, the holiness movement. We all know about those. We've recently seen the movement that ushered in the message of the kingdom, which is powerful. And all of these movements that that that, that we talked about, and I, I think I'm going to say it in the next slide, they all build upon each other. In the message of the kingdom, Jesus spoke that and preached that more often than anything when he was in this earth. Each movement builds the believer and prepares them for the next movement. Each movement empowers the believer to establish the kingdom of God in this earth. And guess what? The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Until we get to this point, as God continues and Christ begin, continues to build the church, we're getting to this point. And I'm sure you've seen this scripture before, either from Apostle or uh, Pastor Sharif. We get to this point in Revelations 5 and 10. We're building up to this particular point and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. The seven system movement is going to literally shake up the church. Yes, it is going to shake up the church first. And the world around it. Yes, it has to meet us here right at the church because many of us have been taught that we the, the things that we can become or the things that we can uh, 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 even aspire to are the things that we see in the church. Deacons, mothers, uh, usher board, mother's board, all of these different things that we do in the church, which are wonderful. But there is something amazing that God wants to do as we go out into the world. And Jesus told us to go out into the world. This movement will cause Christians to be in power in the seven areas of influence that affects every culture around the world. I have had the pleasure to teach around the world the seven systems. We've been to Argentina. We've been to Nicaragua. We've been to Costa Rica. We've had the opportunity to go even to Kenya and Israel, all of these different countries where they have received us and received this revelation, even in, in the local area with uh, Indianapolis. We've been to St. Louis. We've been to Milwaukee. We have released this revelation. And in each one of those countries and everywhere we have been, we have seen these seven areas. We even prayed in some of these areas in other countries. We went to those specific areas and prayed in, in the system in the area where the arts and entertainment was, in the area of the city governments and where they were. We prayed in those areas in, in several different countries around the world. What are these areas influence? You've heard these before. It is education. It is media. It is government. Arts and entertainment, religion, business, and family. Now, we've had many movements that have affected our world, and the one that we identify most with is the civil rights movement. 
what created the need or what caused the civil rights movement to be necessary and therefore relevant? At that time, we were considered three fifths of a man. Isn't that something? We couldn't vote. We could not eat in the same restaurant as our white counterparts. We could not drink from the same water fountains. These, some of these things here and many others created the need for the civil rights movement. The same thought process must be thought out regarding the seven system movement. What creates the need? What makes it relevant or necessary? In each area of influence, here's the issue. There is a cataclysmic breakdown in its structure. Now, let me tell you something in this moment. I want to stop right here just for a moment that when we understand what has happened over these last close to three years in the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, I thank God. I didn't know what, the, what, what God what God was going, how God was going to use this moment. He didn't cause it. But what he always uses is these moments to awaken his people. And I believe that that in this moment where we've been shut down for three years, God shut us up to keep silence before him so we can pay attention to every system of this world to see how its breakdown has occurred. You can look at the system of business and how the broke breakdown occurred in it as we were going through the pandemic. And we're facing an inflation scenario right now with the with the with the, with the which, which the war has caused, the war that we have going on with Russia and Ukraine right now, though the, there has been a breakdown in the business system. There's been a big breakdown in faith. He's challenged us in the area of our churches right now. Because as we know, people were flocking to churches, you know, before the pandemic. But when we after the when the pandemic was happening, we couldn't even have church. God pulled us back and sat us down. And I believe, let me just say this, man. I got to say it, y'all. Sometimes there are there are, there have been many uh, Christians who flocked to churches because they just wanted a church service. And they wasn't looking for the divine and incredible presence of God. So God was like, look, I'm going to turn you back towards me. And that's what I believe that he did, because individually we couldn't go to church. So we had to go home. We had we yes, we had streaming, but God forced us to look at him and in forcing us to look at him. It causes us to look at ourselves. So I believe and I know it for us, for me, it was a situation where we had to grow in our spirit, in our spiritual, in a spiritual way, in our relationship with God during this pandemic. Because at the end of the day, y'all, it was all that we had. God proved himself faithfully through all of this entire uh, pandemic. So the faith structure, the faith system has been challenged. We all know about the governmental system. The governmental system has been challenged. And we look at this, the the uh, Demo Democratic and the Republicans, that division has shown itself in a way that we never thought possible. But God sat us down so we can pay attention. We couldn't we couldn't go about our busy lives during this pandemic, being distracted by all of the different things that we were distracted by prior to the pandemic. God sat us down and let us see us, let us see us right before us, before our eyes. We saw January 6th. The, the attack on the Capitol right before our eyes. That was the breakdown of the system of government, the breakdown of family. God caused us to have to pay attention to our families. As I was talking about before, moving around so fast around the earth, we didn't pay attention to each other. God forced us to pay attention to each other. God forced us to have family time all day in some cases because if we think about this the system of religion i mean system of education they had to stay home the kids had to stay home so we got more family than probably some of us even wanted there is a cataclysmic breakdown in the structure and god sat us down so we can see it all that's why there is a need for us to go out into the seven systems of this world and change the systems because they are old systems they're outdated systems. Even going back to the system of education, 
we know that the, the curriculum in these in these educational uh, places, the curriculum is old. We're not even teaching our children in this day and time, in this technological time, how to be uh, how to be successful and how to operate in these times through the curriculums in the schools. Pastor Jeff going at it. Education still 70 percent of African-Americans who go in as freshmen in high school don't graduate. Huge statistic. In media images that we see, they glorify sin, they glorify violence, and this probably is probably the most uh, important one here, and I call it the mismanagement of the control of the narrative. You can turn on one station, listen to a narrative, or listen to a story about a particular thing, and go to the another station, and you'll see a, a totally different narrative. They control the narrative so they can control the behavior of people. We have to operate and be able to get into the system of media so we can change the narrative and control the narrative in such a way that we don't get all of these negative images. System of government, I talked about earlier, the Democratic and Republican Party system, the unchecked character flaws of politicians. We saw it right before our eyes. Power over the needs of people. We've seen that for centuries, but sitting down and watching through the pandemic, we saw it right before our eyes. And y'all know, believe it or not, even though we've seen these things right before our eyes, we still haven't seen anything yet. Unfortunately, before the system changes, we're gonna see some things that's gonna cause us to really see how important it is for us to get out here and get involved in the seven systems of power and influence. So that was just the foundation for tonight. But we're here in this particular setting to talk about the system of family. And I thank God for Apostle Wilson as we have been, as I said earlier, <laughs> traveling the country, even in, in our country, uh, being able to uh, <coughs> share this, this revelation with different people, he placed us as instructors in the area that we are passionate about. And I thank God for that because I am passionate about the system of family. Pastor Sharia is passionate about arts and entertainment. Apostle is passionate about arts and entertainment. You got Elder Callie coming up after me for, for the system of faith or the system of religion. She's, a, she's passionate about it. And each one of us, each one of you, have to de determine which one of these seven areas that is my, my uh, priority in passions, because we can have several, but there is one in which that you are most passionate about. And for me, it is the system of family. I believe the system of family to be the most important area of influence that needs to be reconciled and restored because it affects every other area of influence in such a critical way. Why do you say that, Pastor Jeff? I say that because we feed out of the system of family every other system, other, every other system uh, that, that, that we've talked about. Everybody has to come from a family. And no matter what condition the family puts that person in, we will feed them into the other areas. That is why in the mountain, in the system of family is so important that we try to release as healthy a human being as possible so that we won't have in government pride, arrogance and greed. That has to start with the family. It starts at the family foundation. So that is why I believe that the family is one of the most, if not the most important system, because we it affects every system because we in, we're influenced we're influencing those systems by releasing the people who are going into those other areas. Johnny Enlow said this. <laughs> Johnny Enlow is one of the prophets who God spoke to about this seven system movement. Here's what he said. He said we live today in unprecedented family breakdown that has caused unprecedented social and physical ills. The number one cause of emotional trauma is a dysfunctional family foundation. We have to come to grips with this. 
I got some dysfunction in my family. Yes, I do. And so do you. I have yet to see. And if there is one out there, please show Pastor Jeff a family foundation that doesn't, that doesn't have some kind of dysfunction in it. And in doing so, we have to make sure that we are rooted in the word of God and, and introduce our families into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, each individual member of our families, so that there is even a chance that we can deal with the emotional trauma that comes out of families. The most vital element to the family structure has been removed. Satan is so cunning. Still, he's a snake. What is that vital element? The vital element is the absence of the father. The absence of the father has resulted directly in single mothers raising children and raising sons. It's resulted in the high rate of households on welfare. Generational issue there. High prison rate among men. The high rate of youth joining gangs, which creates a high rate of youth dying in our streets. The high dropout rate. High rate of girls between the ages of 10 and 15 having babies. The right high rate, and it's still an issue, y'all, of those affected and dying by HIV and AIDS. It's so important for us to deal with these issues because these are issues that affect us for generations to come. From the very beginning, God gave us the structure of family. Genesis 2, verse 21 to 25. And the Lord God caused the deep, deep sleep to call on to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib, which God had taken from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to, to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Here it is. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Somebody say family and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Now, God knew that the family structure would be challenged because of the sin of man. But despite what man has done, God always wanted the family structure to be in the forefront, to be its foundation in the earth. But because of man's sin back in the days of Noah, God decided to destroy the earth. But he also had a plan. Blessed be the name of the Lord to restore it just as he does today. Let's go back in the days of Noah. God knew that he had to use the family structure as the foundation to restore the world to his, to his intended glory. Watch this Genesis chapter six, verse five through eight and verse 13 through 19. Then the Lord God saw, saw <coughs> that wickedness. Let me take a little sip here, y'all. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was on only evil continually. Can you imagine the heartbreak that God had? I'm going to read that one more time. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was on only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry. My God, that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I've made them. That's how disappointed God was. But Noah found grace. Hallelujah. In the sight, in the eyes of the Lord. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. 
interesting. Violence caused God's heart to be broken. And we're dealing with that same issue on today. So he tells Noah, gives him instructions. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits. It's height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it uh, finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark at it in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. God was specific. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from heaven all flesh, which is on, in, which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you. Thank you, Jesus. And you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, your husbands, your sons' wives with you. And of everything of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Here is God creating a plan to restore the family. So as we can see, the family structure was, structure was always important to God. God knew without the family structure in place, as the foundation, that which is built from it would not stand. Matthew 12, 25, but if a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. That's why in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, it says this powerful text here. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the house of the church of God? This is where God sets something in order right here. For if a man does not know how to manage his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? For if a man does not know how to rule, take care of his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? You deal with something right down through here. We church leaders have forgotten about this text. Because there are so many pastors and leaders around the world who have engaged themselves so deep into the church that they have sacrificed their families. I'm going to tell you something about my, my daddy, which who I absolutely love. My dad passed away in 2015 at the age of 75. But my daddy was an alcoholic. And around the age of 32, 33 years old, he gave his life to Christ. And he poured himself into the church which I don't blame him for. As a child, it's difficult to, to see it because here's what, what happened. And because he poured himself in the church, and by the way, I am a PK. He poured himself in the church. I, was a, I played three sports in high school. My daddy never came to any of my games. And so I get to watch other kids get hugs and accolades and of affirmation from their families and from their dads and from their moms. And I turn around and nobody's there for me. And there are many PKs that are under the sound of my voice that have experienced that. So they've sacrificed their families. Somehow that went back to the front. I don't know why. Ooh, I don't even think I said this. Matter of fact, that's probably why I need to go back. Oh, okay. The sacrifice said, watch this. Watch this. They sacrificed, they sacrificed their family. Listen to this. Wellington Boom. <clears throat> I want you to look at listen to these words. He said, Your family looks like what the world would become if you were in charge. <laughs> uh, Pastor Jeff gonna sit back for a little bit, let that settle in. That's some intended silence. Your family looks like what the world would become if you were in charge. Powerful statement. So I needed to make sure when I became Pastor Jeff here at Valley Kingdom Ministries that I made sure that my family was taken care of. 
not by somebody else, but by me. And because of what I experienced with my dad, my mother, you know, my mother, I'm sorry, I come from a, a family of nine kids. So my mother, my mother was pretty busy. So for me, I felt it important because I, as I told you earlier, I had three kids. I didn't miss a football game. I didn't miss a basketball game. I didn't miss a baseball game. I didn't miss a cheerleading competition. I didn't miss, miss a tap, tap dance recital. I was there. And my kids knew I was going. They turned around. Jeff, daddy was going to be there for them. And if I had to have a eulogy that was preached, you can, my kids and my wife can preach it and they can cook, they can just say these words. He was always there. So as we talk about family and how important it is, God even had to check Jesus on this matter. Really, Pastor Jeff? Absolutely. Luke chapter two, verse 41 to 52. Talking about Jesus, parents, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. Ain't that something? And Joseph and his mother did not know it. Sneaky self. But supposing him to have been in the company, hanging out with the, with the people that went down to Jerusalem, they went a day's journey, a whole day's journey, and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem. They had to go back another day's journey because they couldn't find Jesus looking for him. Verse 46. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And I'm sure mama and daddy was like, boy, what you doing back here? <laughs> you were supposed to be. We could have been at the crib by now. And you back here sitting up in the church, listening and asking people questions. Verse 47. And all who heard him listen to this were astonished at his understanding and answers so that's that would make it seem that he was in the right place at the right time doing what he was supposed to be doing so when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said to him son why have you done this to us what are you doing here look your father and i have sought you anxiously they were anxiously looking for their son have you ever been in a situation where you were looking for your kids and you couldn't find them and he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? That was his response to the anxiety after this long road back to find Jesus, looking for him. They finally find him. And he said, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Did you know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which, which was spoken to him. And look what happened. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept these things in her heart. Listen to me. Jesus went back to Nazareth. Jesus went back to his family. And the Bible says because of that in verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man by going back to his family. Jesus submitted himself to his family for the next 18 years. Remember when he was in the temple, he was 12. He didn't start his ministry until he was 30. So he submitted himself to his family for the next 18 years. I believe by now, I have proven to you that indeed family is important to God. But here's the issue. Here's the problem. We face the same issues of the days of Noah in our society right now, where evil is in the heart of man continually. The father of the house, the father of the family has rejected his family and the spirit of rejection has absolutely caused dysfunction in the family unit. But listen to this in Malachi chapter four, the prophetic word 
shall come to pass. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, he will return the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. God is using the seven system movement to use his people to help restore the family structure to the glory it once had. I have to share, share a story right here. And I thank God for Apostle Wilson, who allowed me uh, over the 12 year period, I believe it was, um, I'm, I'm at the chief administrator here at Valley Kingdom Ministries Inter International. Prior to that, I was over uh, the ministries. I was the pastor of ministries. And there was a time when I felt the call and I felt the urge and I felt the unction uh, to an assignment uh, that I had with a football and cheerleading program that I was able to take over called the Country Club Hills Cougars. It was a football and cheerleading program. And we used to service over 150, 160 kids, which it, with blended families, it turned out to be about 300 different families in the city of Country Club Hills, Illinois. And what I understood in that moment that God had given me an assignment, I really became the pastor of that particular program because in that program was so many kids who didn't have a father at home. But I had 30 football coaches and about 20 cheerleading coaches, coaches, the football coaches became that father figure for those kids. And I shared with them the vision of the Country Club Hill, Hills Cougars in that environment. When they walk on in, into our football facility, they will feel loved. They will feel appreciated. They will feel family. I wanted them to feel the acceptance that a father gives their son and a father gives their daughter. And the last thing that I want to mention about that, and I thank God for Apostle Wilson releasing me to be able to do that because it required me to be on that fo football field. We started in June and didn't come off that football field to November, which means I missed a lot of Sundays at church. But I'm going to tell you right now, I was in my assignment because God helped me helped these kids for over 12 years. And I have some of them that are now playing college football at division one universities. I was at the University of Minnesota over the um, over this last football season. And I was able to see the University of Minnesota play the University of M Nebraska. And one of my kids, Bucky was playing for the Minnesota, the University of Minnesota. And my kid, uh, Alante was playing for the University of Nebraska. Do you know that was a coach's dream? Sitting there watch two, watching two kids who were once babies grow up in the program, and now they have a free education at a Division I college. That's what it's about, changing the lives of people. So God is using the seven system movement to use his people to help restore the family structure to the glory it once had. Our nation is in a similar state as it was in the days of Noah where evil is on a man's thoughts continually and the earth is filled with violence. We know we see it. All of these issues affect our own lives, but God made me come by here to let you know something. Get ready for this family. Genesis 8, 1 through 6, it is the same today. Even though all of that stuff was going on, evil was on the heart of man, violence was throughout the earth. The Bible says, then God remembered Noah. You can put your name right there. Somebody put their name right there. Then God remembered Jeff. Then God remembered Sabrina. Then God remembered Timothy. Yeah, we know that you've been going through some things. We know that you've been going through some things in your family. We know that you went through some things when you was 12, 13 years old, but God remembers you. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. Then the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained by the hand of God. The waters receded continually from the earth and the end of the 150 days, the waters decreased. <clears throat> then the ark rested in the seventh month. 
the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Isn't that wonderful? It came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. I'm going to do a, deal with a couple of things and I'm going to be done. Number one, those words, then God remembered Noah. The current state of our nation makes you think that God has forgotten about us, but I need you to know that he remembers. God has now turned his attention toward us. God wants us to be engaged in the system of family so that he can combat the spirit of rejection with the spirit of love. Many of the children and youth of today do not get the loving touch of a father or mother in some cases, which is needed to communicate his or her warmth. We need to communicate warmth. They need to feel personal acceptance and affirmation of value as a person. That's why many of us, and I say this all the time, many of us as adults, we're still 12 year olds because we never felt the warmth. We never felt the personal acceptance. We never felt the affirmation of value as a person. And that is so vital to human beings to feel that. That's where the self esteem comes in. The self worth comes in. It's so important. That's point number two. God made a wind to pass over the earth. Whenever God is ready to shake up the earth or transition us into a new movement, he sends a wind first. The wind is his breath, his spirit. When he wanted heaven on earth, he created a man to rule it and he breathed the breath of life, his wind into man. When he wanted to continue the earth shattering work of Jesus Christ, he sent the Holy Spirit by a rushing mighty wind. The rushing mighty wind of this day is moving us into places we have not gone before. Those are the seven systems that we've been talking about over these last three weeks. That rushing mighty wind is pushing us out of our comfort zone in the church and pushing us out to our communities, pushing us out into the newsrooms, pushing us out into the governmental establishments, pushing us out into the area of arts and entertainment and movies and books and film, pushing us out into media, pushing us out into the system of education. <clears throat> it will cause us to destroy the kingdom of darkness that has ruled the seven systems of culture and established them for the kingdom of God. That is what the purpose is for the seven systems, the seven pillars, the seven mountains of culture is to establish the kingdom of God on this earth. Number three, the Bible declares in verse four, then the ark rested. Hebrew word for rested is nuach. It means to be relieved. Somebody needs to be relieved out there. It means to be refreshed. Somebody needs to be refreshed out there. It means to be recovered. Somebody's been all over the place. Somebody's been misplaced, need to be recovered. Somebody's mind has been all over the place, been moving fast, ain't getting no sleep. They need to be refocused. Some of us, our families have caused us to be in bondage into different, uh, into our, into different things that have happened to us in our past, and they need to be released. The family will be relieved from the stresses of life without the covering of a father. I look at this little girl on here, and I used to be called all the time to high schools 
you know, my my uh, football <laughs> program, football and cheerleading program, most of the football players and cheerleaders went over to the high school to further, their, of course, their education, but also became football players and cheerleaders there. The calls I used to get from the high schools about my program, people coming out of my program fighting, most of the fights was for because it was my girls fighting. And one of the things I had to realize is that because the girls, the ones that didn't have a father, they never had a covering. They never felt protected. So they ended up trying to protect themselves. That's why we see so much anger coming from our young people. It's because they haven't had a covering. So they feel like they, they are exposed. They feel like that, that, that they are, uh, they're, right now they feel like they are, uh, I'm gonna use that word exposed again because anything can happen to them at any given moment and therefore I have to protect myself. Therefore I have to cover myself. So the family would be relieved from the stresses of life without the covering of the father. The family would be refreshed from his thirst for the ministry of the family. I want to go back to something I said earlier, and it's in this book, um, and I forget the name of it, but Apostle had us read it, the post-pandemic church. It's talk about how, how important it is in ministry post-pandemic that we utilize our facilities. There are churches all over the country. I remember one day in, on, on uh, Hostage Street here in Chicago, I counted churches from 55th to 87th Street. And it had to be, I remember the number, it had to be somewhere close to 65, 70 churches in that block radius. And they're probably like 20 blocks, 30 blocks. We got churches, but now we have to utilize those facilities for our, for the people in the community to be able to come and get ministry. We have certainly been talking about it uh, through uh, with Apostle Wilson. And as you all know, probably know, Apostle Wilson will be moving on to his next assignment coming out of the senior pastor role. But we've been talking about utilizing the facility here at Valley Kingdom to be a blessing to the community. So the family will be refreshed. Let me say something about that. If I believe if churches don't become more active in the community community it will render itself irrelevant and i can tell you this if you take care of the community the community will come to you you take care of its needs this is you jesus christ all day long meet the need that's why the multitudes were growing around jesus so fast you want your church to grow meet the needs Make your make your uh, your church, your church facility, a community center. The family will be refreshed from his thirst for ministry of the family. The family will recover from rejection and be motivated by the love of God. The art of confusion, the devil himself will be destroyed and the family will be refocused. The family will also be released from the pain of violence and bloodshed that is killing our babies. Let me challenge you as I close. The Bible says in verse six, so it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Let me challenge you right now. You must be bold enough to take a chance. What do you mean by that, Pastor Jeff? After 40 days of rain <coughs> and another 150 days waiting for the wire to, water to dry up, I'm sure Noah was afraid to open the window of the ark. What would he see? More importantly, what would he expose himself to? But Noah took a chance. We've been shut up in the four walls of the church long enough. I'm sure there are those who wonder, what would we see if we went outside the four walls of the church? There are those who wonder, what would we expose ourselves to if we go outside 
the four walls of the church. If I go into the area of influence that my passion is in, what is going to happen if I go out and start dealing in the mount, mountain of, of media, in the crazy world that is arts and entertainment? What am I going to expose myself to? In the crazy world of greed and selfishness of government, what am I going to expose myself to? But I'm asking you the question, are you bold enough to take a chance? Be bold enough to take a chance. If we're not bold enough in this moment, in the history of our country, we could end up being a victim. Let me say that one more time. If we're not bold enough in this moment, in the history of our world, we could end up being a victim again. It's time for us to operate in the boldness and the courage and the power and authority that God has given us as kingdom people to be able to take this earth and establish the kingdom for our Lord Jesus Christ in the system of family and in the other systems of this world. Noah took a chance and opened the window. Ah, the window. Whenever you see the word window in the word of God, whenever you see the word window or you see the image of a window in your dreams, a window represents opportunity. Say that again. A window represents opportunity. I know we've been doing this a long time in the body of Christ. I know you've been waiting on God to do something. But God is waiting on the body of Christ to stand up and do something. Let's seize the opportunity. The system of family needs you. That is the end of our lesson on today. I pray that you have been blessed. In fact, I'd like to close <clears throat> with a word of prayer for us as we uh, continue uh, to grow and build, as God continues to build his church. And I talked about God building his church in general as a building, but I need you to know that I'm also talking about God building his church because we are the church individually. So, Father, we bless your name right now, God. We thank you for this opportunity to come and share with your people. I never take it lightly to share to the hearts of your people. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you, Apostle Gullett. I thank you, Apostle Wilson. God, I pray right now, as the revelation continues to be released, that your people will recognize the area in which they are passionate about. And once they recognize the area that they are passionate about, that they will get busy in that particular area to establish your kingdom. I declare over their lives right now, God, what I spoke earlier, the boldness, the courage, the power, the authority as kingdom people to operate in those areas. And I pray those seven spirits that that was prophesied over Jesus Christ in Isaiah chapter 11, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, and the spirit of the Lord be with them as they go. And we believe if we go and do what you have given us to do and that you have birthed us to do in our hearts, that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. God bless you. I pray that this, this lesson has blessed you. I pray that it has inspired you. I pray that it has encouraged you. I even pray that it has healed you from the past hurts that may have come in your life that has prepared you for your future. God bless you.
that was an amazing teaching, and I know that you were truly blessed by it. And with that teaching, it gave us principles of the kingdom. But one key principle of the kingdom is salvation and being in relationship with Christ. And so if you're new to the body, you may not be sure what that means. All that is, is coming into relationship and accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it can be just as simple as saying, Lord, forgive me, for I am a sinner. I'm not perfect. I've done things that I'm not proud of but I believe in you and I know that you save. And so you can save me. So if you in your heart feel like you need a savior, that you need relationship with something bigger, something greater, then I wanna invite you to build relationship with Christ on today. So just repeat after me. Father God, I, I know I don't know everything. I know I haven't always done right, but I know that you are the God that makes my path straight. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and I believe in you, that you died and you rose on the third day just for me. And just for me, I wanna give my life over to you. So Father, come into my heart, because I believe you to be my savior. If you prayed that, welcome to the family, welcome to the fold, welcome to the body of Christ. We are so excited for you, and we are um, wanting to build connection, relationship, and community with you. So go ahead, fill out that connection card. Uh, drop it in the chat that you gave your life to Christ because we want to connect with you. And we wanna help you through this journey as you um, learn more about Jesus, as you learn more about relationship. And even if you were a backslider and you may have stepped away, welcome back. We are excited because God is married to the backslider. We won't be perfect, we will make mistakes, but God can redeem us. And we are just so excited for the step that you have taken on tonight to come back into the fold of, of the body of Christ and to come into relationship. So once again, fill out that connection card because we want to connect with you. And we thank you, all of you who are watching right now, who have been giving to us, who have been generous partners. We appreciate you because we wouldn't be able to do the work, the kingdom work that we do, not only here in the States, but internationally without you. So every donation that you make, it helps us to edify and build the kingdom for our Lord and Savior. So. If you would like to give on tonight, if you would like to donate, if you would like to sow into good, solid ground, you can do that at this time. You see the information across the screen. And until next time, we pray that you have a blessed week and keep digging deeper because we're all a part of the process and sometimes we have to make a U-turn. Well, be blessed. Well, God bless you and kingdom blesses. Apostle coming at you with Pastor Ray Beatty in the house. Here in the house. <laughs> we are just so excited. about the transition weekend because my pastors are excited and I'm just excited for them. I'm excited because this is, will be unbelievable. This event is going to break records, set the mo We are the map and the model. Watch us move. Yes. From Page Avenue to Oak Forest, I'm excited. I'm excited because the Shekinah glory is going to reign in the place. I am so excited because our apostle and Pastor Bev is leaving a legacy that no one could ever imagine. And we're going to go forth with power impacting the city, the state, the country, and the world. So that's why we are excited. Just so excited. Yes, sir. About what's getting ready to come. You know, you've heard me say it many times on the opening of um, the Chicago Glory uh, CDs. Well, well it's, it's about, about that, that time. time. Yeah. We want you to mark your calendar and your dates of June 24, 25th, and 26th. It's a yes. whole weekend. Friday, we have put on a musical experience. We're, we're in pre-production right now. A, a musical experience that you won't forget. Yeah. Saturday is going to be a night, uh, and forgive me, I haven't done nearly half the things that this man has done. We're going to mm. honor 38 years. It's going to be a night of honor for, oh, for you. For and you. it's going to be yes. pre-show. It's just going to really be big. Yeah. And then Sun, we're calling that the transition experience. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be real, real, real special, ceremonial. It's going to be pageantry. You know how we do it here with Shekinah Glory. Mm -hmm. So we don't want you to miss. Save the date. Save the date. It's June 24th, 24th 25th, 25th, 
and 26. 26. You will be blessed. God bless you. Until that time, God bless you. family, I'm so excited to let you know that Youth and Children's Ministry will be hosting a sneaker ball Saturday, June 4th at 6 p.m. Listen, we want you to come in your most beautiful gown, your most dapper suit, but guess what? In your sneakers. Yes, you heard it right. In your sneakers. We'll have special guests, Apostle H. Daniel Wilson and Pastor Beverly Wilson, as well as Pastor Ray and First Lady Shalon. Listen, we need mentors. Just how Apostle has been mentoring and guiding Pastor Ray for a full year through this transition, we want for you to do the same. Just take one full year and invest and pour into our youth and children. Listen, you never know if one of our youth or children could be the next pastor of VKMI, maybe in year 2035, but hey, who's counting? Let's invest into our children, our youth. We need mentors. You can log on to our website for more information at vkmi.org. Remember, we want to see you at our sneaker ball in your best dress, your best suit, but in your sneakers. Can't wait to see you. That's your sneaker ball June 4. Make sure to come in your best sneakers and outfit. Adult volunteers needed to mentor our youth and children. Come register at vkmi.org. Hey, Valley family, it's Pastor Jeff. Are you ready for this right here? Yes, it's going down. On June 18th, it is the Valley Kingdom Ministries International Reunion Picnic. Man, we're going to have so much fun. We have things for you. We have things for children. And of course, we have things for adults. And our seniors, we got a senior tent for you. Got some special things going on up in that senior tent. But look here, we need you all to mark your calendar for June 18th at Green Lake Woods. Come on out there in Calumet City, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We want you to come join us. We're gonna bring members and friends back from way back when and just invite them out just so that we can have a fellowship with one another and certainly honor Apostle H. Daniel Wilson and Pastor Beverly Wilson in a fun and relaxed atmosphere. So come on out. We'll have music. We'll have games. We're going to have, might even have a little uh, roast for Apostle H. Daniel Wilson. That's a secret. But we're going to have some fun on that day, you all. So make sure you bring your tents. Make sure you bring a little food. We're going to have some food on the side for, for the people that don't bring any. But bring your tents out there. Bring your grills out there. We just want to have a great time and enjoy one another. Once again, on June 18th at Green Lake Woods from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Come join us. Mark your calendars. Have some fun. My name is Michelle Akins, and you may remember me as the publisher of Grace Today magazine. Well, I came back to participate in an exciting venture called Momentum Magazine. Valley Kingdom Ministries International has always been on the cutting edge of communicating and ministry, and this is no different. Momentum Magazine is going to feature interviews with Apostle and Pastor Ray, a pictorial history of the Valley's journey, articles on mental health, emotional health, finances, and so much more. You can get your copy by going online to pre-order. Get your copy now by going to the Valley's website and clicking on Momentum Magazine. And later in June, Momentum Digital will be available where you will get even more information, all for $15. See you in the magazine.